The colloid cyst is a, uh, it's a, as it is described, it's a cyst which acts like a tumor and grows by filling with a colloidal material. It's kind of uh, uh, material which looks like uh, um, as thick as molasses in a way or honey and it is more whitish in color. And is it something that our body makes anyway? Yeah, we there is a layer that uh, produces spinal fluid in our brain because the brain is kind of submerged in water. And uh, this layer develops little cysts in it. But in certain locations, some patients are predisposed to develop a larger cyst, which it's really in the center of the head. If you take two, two uh, fingers and make them meet in the middle, and that's exactly where it's located and they can block the outflow of fluid so the fluid backs up and starts growing to where uh, you know it causes pressure on the brain and it can reach a certain level to where like in, in Mr. Rogers case he had a lot of problems and symptoms acutely some patients can drop dead from them uh, without ever knowing they have a problem. Without, yes usually it, it, as it starts growing and causing blockage uh, patients will start having headaches on and off, and it's easy to undermine a headache in a way. Yes. Um, and you said some people are predisposed to it. What actually causes it? Is it a bump on the head? Or? Not really. We, we do not know. Oh, it, it's, uh, they're not uh, predisposed to it, like it's not being familial, although there are, you know, I've had one patient who's the dad and the son had it, and there are some few cases like that, but they occur randomly. But there are locations in the brain where they are more prone to develop them, and those locations can cause the symptoms that, that uh, in this case, were with Mr. Rogers. And um, just how difficult is it to remove in Mr. Rogers? Well, it, it is uh, located in a very tricky spot of the brain. Um, there is uh, certain cables that pass through that region which uh, have to do with the control of memory and uh, there's also different parts of the brain which we have to be close by which will uh, also uh, affect the uh, level of consciousness so it is in a very tricky spot um, you really have to uh, the surgery of lesions like this uh, it's like a having to selectively go to the spot remove the tumor without affecting a lot of tissues around it that could be uh, very kind of risky to injure. And so. Mr. Rogers was in surgery for how long? Uh, about three to four hours. Yeah. Uh, tell me about any challenges that uh, Mr. Rogers might have as a result of the surgery. Well, um, things that can occur as a result, uh, sometimes the fluid uh, drainage can get blocked to where they may need to put a catheter or a shunt. He needed that to start with because the blockage occurred initially. But fortunately, once we took the cyst out, all the pathways opened, so it wasn't necessary to keep it, and eventually we removed it. So. And he has no lasting impairments because of his No, fortunately, everything went well, and uh, he seems to be back to his uh, normal life and normal activities. Um, what would have happened? Oh, I think you already told me if it's untreated, it can kill you. Oh, yes. This is, uh, if untreated, uh, these can cause. Uh, a blockage to where the pressure will build up enough to cause brain shifts and uh, this will lead to patients uh, you know having uh, a fatal outcome from them. Yeah. Is there anything about this that I haven't asked you that's important? No, I, I think this is uh, what's important to know is these are uh, there's a lot of deep-seated lesions that uh, in a lot of times used to be considered inoperable or difficult to treat and I think nowadays it's true, brain surgery is still a big deal, it's brain surgery, but I think the advances that uh, have been achieved in treating different types of brain tumors and so forth has really come a long way to where patients now, on average, stay two to three or four days in the hospital. Within four to five weeks, they're back to their work. And even with the cancers of the brain, which used to be uh, very difficult to, to operate on and very difficult to treat, at this stage, we have a lot of uh, uh, advances in the treatment to where patients who used to only live three and four and five and six months are able to live two years and more.